Hello, my name is Mia Asano and I am a violinist. Um, I play acoustic and electric violin and I currently am in college. I go to the Berklee College of Music um, and I'm about to start my senior year. So I'm really, really excited about that. Um, and I'm super grateful to the Electric Violin Shop and Matt Bell uh, for having me here. Um, and please don't be afraid to ask questions throughout the next hour um, while we talk about social media. Uh, so, Social media is a super powerful tool that um, I think all of us should be utilizing right now if you're a performer um, in any sense, uh, if you wanna be getting your music out there, uh, social media is the way to do that right now because we live in a world where kind of everything's online. Uh, and I have the fortune of experiencing several viral videos um, over the last few months uh, because I was kind of just posting online, kind of on TikTok and Instagram, um, totally casually, like, the story goes that, you know, I'm at Berkeley, I'm studying jazz pretty hardcore, and I was kind of not feeling as fulfilled because what I really love to do is, you know, fiddle and pop and rock and all of that stuff. Um, so I start posting on TikTok kind of secretly, just for fun, um, to kind of do something that was low key, low pressure, um, low stakes. And I start posting videos on there, and then I had one that just went viral, like overnight. Um, and I woke up the next morning with 100,000 followers and like 3 million views. Now the numbers have gotten to, I think that video is almost at 10 million views, which is just crazy. Like I still can't believe it. And it was kind of unintentional. But then since then I've been posting um, a bunch of videos on online uh, and it's kind of become a job, like a full-time job almost. So uh, I'm here to kind of tell you some tips, some tricks, uh, but primarily I'm here to try and convince some of our, some of the musician community um, why social media can be really powerful for promoting yourself um, and building your personal brand. So let's get into it. Uh, first of all, I feel like I've come across a lot of musicians who are kind of against um, maybe putting themselves out there in that way, or they do put themselves out there on social media and, um, you know, they don't really know what they should be posting, uh, or they're posting stuff, but it's not really getting a lot of views or likes um, or attention, and they're wondering why. Um, I'm also going to be reading through some comments. So hi, Rob, thanks for joining us, and thank you for your comment. Um, so there's a lot of classic mistakes that I think a lot of musicians make when they're posting stuff um, online. So the first is a lot of people have kind of reservations towards putting themselves out there. I've heard a lot of people say like, oh, you know, it's just about the music. I don't care if it, like how many people are hearing me. Um, it just matters like the music. And I totally actually agree with that. I think the most important thing is the music like you have to have good content to be sharing um you know you're not gonna get famous just for, well some people do but you're not in the music community like if you have musical integrity which i know all of you do we want people to love us for our music first and foremost um that's that's the most important thing so you got to have good content but you know that's not enough you could be the greatest musician in the world and you could be just, if you just stay in your practice room and, and you play amazingly, like nobody's ever gonna hear it um, and nobody's ever gonna enjoy it. And isn't the point of music to spread it and share it with others um, and to help people. So uh, the, the importance is um, to be posting regularly. Um, and that's kind of what, what comes down to it is you have to have some sort of um, regular online presence. And I know a lot of people are really hesitant about that. A lot of people are really, um, are busy <laughs> like i'm really busy and you have to kind of unfortunately prioritize it a little bit but here's why it's important because of social media i've met so many incredible musicians i get most of my gigs i would say like 90 percent of my gigs through people that i meet online um mo a significant amount of my friends like some of my closest friends i've met through instagram and they're all musicians and we just met because we discovered each other's videos we liked each other's content and then um we kind of bonded and i've gotten some of the coolest gigs ever like some of the coolest gigs i've played in boston were through a friend who i met through instagram like those types of things um but it's the way that I promote myself and it's the way that I've been sharing my content. Uh, so the biggest mistake that musicians make first and foremost is I would say not posting enough. Um, and secondly, the biggest mistake that musicians make is, um, not, is posting low quality content. So you really want, when you're posting stuff in your videos, you want it to be um, the highest quality possible. Most of, hi Matt, Matt's checking in, good to see you. I'm just kind of rambling about all of my, my thoughts about <laughs> all of this. Um, 
but what was I saying? Um, the second biggest mistake is the quality of your videos. So if you have an iPhone or an Android, um, most phones will shoot in HD or in 4K. All you have to do is go into the settings um, and you just change the setting to like 1080 um, FPS, H, I forget what it says, but you want it to be just like the highest quality, either HD or 4K. I always shoot in 4K. Um, just because then it's easier to crop it if you're, cause my videos, I film both horizontally and vertically, um, depending on the platform that I'm on. Uh, but it's totally up to you. And then what else, the other thing you want to do is film with your back camera, not your front camera. I'm filming with my front camera right now, but if I were to film with my back camera, it would be significantly higher quality. Um, and it's hard because then you can't see yourself. Um, so it's a trade off, but if you want the highest quality video, you're going to want to use your back camera. The other thing you're going to want to do is tap um this is true on the iphone and then i think on android it's a little bit differently um but you tap and hold and that'll enact this lock the ae slash af lock um which basically locks the um camera in place so it's not auto focusing uh which can make your light kind of like flicker in and out while you're filming i'm going to take this question from rob he says do you film both horizontally and vertically simultaneously no i i don't i know some people um will film in 4k with a really wide angle and then they'll crop it um, for the vertical video and then they'll have it for the horizontal one that is like too much work for me so I will usually um, I usually always film it in 4k but then so then just in case I need to crop it I can and it's also just like the highest quality possible because when you post stuff online unfortunately the social media platform like decreases the quality of it and I, I have that biggest problem on Facebook actually um, on the other platforms I've kind of found ways around it but um, you know you got to play around with your settings sometimes to, to post HD on social media platforms um, I'm seeing what else everyone's saying hello Catherine good to see you I'm glad you're here um, yeah please guys don't be afraid to ask questions I'm here to answer all of them and oh and i want to i do want to say this is mostly beginner and intermediate stuff that i'm covering like for more advanced stuff that i feel like is more that's like a more of a one-on-one -on -one personal um conversation so i do like consult like individual consultations outside of live streams but here this is just kind of the basics for people that are either just starting out or people that want to improve hey tiffany super good to see you here thank you for watching um Okay, so you want your video quality to be super good. So we have our camera now shooting in HD. What's next? Well, you want really good lighting. You want a good frame and you want a good background. Those are the most important things. So lighting, I would say, is the most important thing ever. So I have some lights on right now. Look at what I look like if I were to turn them off. See how that's just not as good? Um, so the lights that I use, um, they're these ones. You can get them on Amazon. They're just these LED um, battery operated lights. And then I have some diffusion paper on them. Um, and that's what I use for everything. I used to use a ring light. Not the biggest fan of the one that I have. So these ones get the job done. And I always have at least two lights on me. Sometimes I'll have a third. So I'll have my key light, my fill light, and a backlight, which lights the back of me. Um, super, super, super important as you just saw. So once you have your lighting, you also want to have a good frame. So depending on if you're filming horizontally or vertically, and I'll get into it later, what the most of like why you would want to do each one of those, um, you want a little bit of headroom above you. Cause if I'm cut off like this, it just doesn't look that good. But simultaneously, like if I'm way too short, that also doesn't look good. And you want to be pretty much in the camera. Um, and that goes for uh, vertical videos too. And since I'm really, really short, um, sometimes I have to wear like high heels to even fit in the frame in my videos, um, just because otherwise I look really awkward. So that's one of my secrets. Um, but yeah, the way that you're framed in the video is super important. And I see so many videos where it's like, maybe it's a YouTube video, but the person filmed it vertically, which is a no-no. And then it's like from down here, so you can see like all of their double chin, but no shame on double chins, but you don't want that in your video. Um, and then it's like this, you can barely see them. The lighting's terrible. They're maybe in front of a window, so they're backlit. It just looks not as professional as this, which I've worked really hard over the months to figure out the best way to present yourself in a video. So super important. You never want to be in front of a window because you'll be silhouetted. Um, I guess I could show, well, I don't know if I could show you. I'm like in front of a window right now. Oh! Check it out. Check out the difference between if I'm filming like this versus what you just saw. See, it's really simple things that 
people don't really think about, but it really makes a huge, huge, huge difference. Um, I know the whole point of this live stream is marketing and promotion, but the first step is you need to have quality content so that people want to hire you. Um, and then the last thing is background. So every I've created my room so that every single wall of my room is a different video background, potential video background, which if you see some of my videos, um, you will recognize. Uh, but that's, again, that kind of took some time. What's most important is you don't want like trash on the floor. You don't want, um, it's, it's basic stuff, but it's important. Like if you're in your room, like clean your room, make your bed, like really simple little things. So those are how to create quality content. The other thing is you're probably going to want good quality pictures of yourself. Um, so again, from a young age, um, I was in a kind of unique position. I started modeling when I was like 16 um, because I played at a lot of fashion shows. And then through the fashion shows, I would meet photographers who would want to do trade shoots. Um, so both of us would be benefiting from the shoot. Uh, and I would ask them like, hey, do you do TFP? And they'd be like, yes which stands for trade for profit. And then we would just do some really fun photo shoots. And then I would use those to promote myself. And then anytime I had a gig, I'd post a really high quality picture of myself and talk about the gig. And basically like I was doing stuff, but I would also play it up. Like you want it to look like you have like a really strong presence and you are somebody because the idea is you go to a gig, you meet someone, they check you out on Instagram or Facebook and they're like, oh my God, who is this person? I need to work with them. I want to hear them play more and they look at your videos you're now very high quality videos that you filmed and they're like oh my god this person's amazing because remember lesson number one music the music itself is the most important thing so see how it all kind of plays into itself you create a really strong foundation and then when people look at it then it makes them want to work with you and this is assuming that they haven't actually heard you play ideally them hearing your playing makes them want to work with you too um hi sarah super good to see you um, oh my gosh, you guys are saying very nice things, so thank you. Um, okay, so we've covered having good content. Um, and again, it's not really that hard. Like I said, your phone can take really good quality pictures. Um, so even if you just have a friend, go out and do a photo shoot with them, like out in the park or something. I used to do that all the time with friends. Um, and you just have them take some pictures of you, and then you want to get the most for your time and money it's ideally a free shoot but whenever i do a photo shoot i always bring at least, at least like two or three outfit changes so then i can get multiple photos out of that one shoot um okay seeing some more messages um hi tanya you are very welcome hello raz good to see you um okay she says what is your selection process for songs to work with that's a really good question so we're diving into content a little bit um I, you know, it's different on every platform, what people are looking for, but in general, there's these trends that are going on. And if you're on TikTok, you know about it. If you're not on TikTok, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about um, and probably <laughs> might not care. That's kind of where I was at. I was like, months ago, I was like, what is TikTok? Like, is that just the app where people are dancing? And then I went on there and I realized, no, there's actually like a huge music community on there. There's a comedy community. There's a community of people with cute animals. Like um, it's not just like what I think it's stereotypically seen as. So once I kind of went in there, I saw the music community and I saw what they were doing. I got super, super um, inspired to do it myself. So then you realize that on TikTok, there's constantly things like songs and stuff that are trending. So I just, um, the, like the best way to do well on TikTok is to follow the trends, um, and uh, because the because the algorithm will like push any trend, so like your video is more likely to get seen if you hopped on something that the app already recognizes that everyone's viewing a lot, um, and that's like kind of the basic. I could go way more into detail, but I I don't want to bore people with algorithm talk. So um, how I choose the songs is I go through, I see what's trending. I see what inspires me and what I think would be fun for me to play. Um, and then I'll cover that and I'll kind of like, and I batch all my content now. Like I film seven to 10 videos at a time instead of one per day. I used to do one per day and it was like too much. Um, so then I'll kind of just have a bunch of songs and I'll play through them and whichever one's kind of, I'm able to come up with something for them. That's what I'll end up posting. So I actually have a lot of, um, like songs and content that I make that never even gets posted, which is disappointing, but I'm really, um, really, really picky about what I put out there. 
Um, that's my selection process. And then the other way that I pick songs is I just do stuff that I like. Um, I used to try really hard to pick stuff that I thought other people would want, and I was actually not as happy as I am now, because, like, I play in my own band, the Mia Asano band, and pre- coronavirus i was just playing songs that i thought were crowd pleasers um and it was fun but then post oh well, i guess in the middle of the pandemic we started up again and i was like you know what i'm only going to do songs that make me really happy and that make me excited to play them and i had way 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 more fun so um this is a bit of a personal thing but i just play songs that um when I select something, it's usually something that I like because it can be a little soul sucking to be just following trends all the time and, and taking requests all the time. That's the other thing I do is I take a lot of requests, um, but I stopped for a while because I felt like I wasn't, you know, being fair to myself and what I want, um, what I want to be putting out there. And then now I'm doing the requests again, but in a way that makes me feel fulfilled. Um, Sarah says, love hearing your process, admire your hustle and representation so much. Oh my gosh, thank you for saying that. Thank you for your support. Um, hello in Mexico to um, Raul. And, okay, keep the questions coming, guys, but I will continue with my little, my little speech about social media. So we've now learned how to create good content, and now we're learning about how to make good connections on social media. And again, this is all beginner and intermediate stuff, um, but if you want me to go more advanced, at another time I totally totally can um, but I feel like some people that are watching this might already know all this stuff totally fine if this is all new to you um, don't worry it's not as daunting as it seems um, it's just kind of a matter of doing it okay the next step is uh, really really important um, you want to be using hashtags super important um, on Instagram and mildly important on TikTok on Facebook <laughs> I don't know. I do it sometimes, but I've never experienced it being like super helpful. Maybe someone else has. Um, but basically you want to be using hashtags for, I use them not to try and put my um, post like on a really popular hashtag. I use them more for the niche um, because I'll tell you so many times I've gotten a gig from someone and they told me that they found me under hashtag Boston violin. Um, or hashtag Denver violin or Denver model or like whatever. I'm going to drink water really quick. Um, so it's really important. I tell people I used to post like the same 30 hashtags on every single picture and my Instagram actually got shadow banned because um, they think that you're a bot and they don't want you kind of spamming. So now I only put like the most relevant hashtags. Um, but it's, it's very important for networking. So I'll try to put hashtags that are broad, but I also try to put hashtags that I know will be seen by potential clients. Um, so that's something that's, uh, pretty, pretty important. Rob says Denver too. Are you back and forth between cities? I'm originally from Denver. Um, so I would, I gigged all throughout high school around Colorado and then now I live in Boston. So when I'm in Denver, I'll do hashtag Denver music or, and back when I lived there, it was always hashtag Denver music. Now it's always hashtag Boston music um, and it changes. Uh, I don't ever do hashtags that are so niche that I know people aren't looking at them. Like nobody's looking at like hashtag Mia Asano. So I don't really ha hashtag that one so much anymore. Um, but I know people are like the same way that when I need to find a photographer, I look for them under hashtag Boston photo or Boston photographer. So you need to put yourself in the mind of the client and see like, what are they going to be looking for? Um, and how can I make sure that I'm the first thing that they see? Uh, and social media is a very powerful way to do that and a free way to do that. But again, the most important thing is when they click on your hashtag, you want them to see something really good. They, you don't want them to see like an account that's full of dark videos of you playing in your room. No matter how killing you are, which you probably are amazing, but people these days have such short attention spans and they really also hear with their eyes so you want to give them something that's aesthetically pleasing in most in most circumstances like this is very broad again okay um hashtags very important how often should you be posting that's a really good question a lot of people um have mixed feelings about this i personally have mixed feelings about this i see some artists that post like multiple times a day every day um and they do really well i see some artists that are so like uh against social media, which I think all of us are to some extent, I have a love-hate relationship with it, that they'll only post like once a week or once a month. 
Um, and depending on the level of clout you have, I feel like you can get away with kind of whatever. Um, but if you're trying to promote yourself and build a following, uh, you should be posting every single day. Like I try to do, well, I pretty much post one TikTok video every single day which means I have to make a TikTok video every single day, which takes a lot of time and energy. So if that's not for you, that's totally fine. You need to find something, a posting schedule that's going to work for you, your schedule. Some of us are gigging full time. Some of us are in college full time. Some of us are married with kids. Some of us, you know, life gets crazy. So you need to find a way to um, be posting regularly, but in a way that's healthy for you. Um, for me, making one video every single day got too much and I had to take a big break from it and that's why now I, I batch my content. Um, and I'm glad you mentioned that, Sarah. Um, you're asking about automated posting. Um, I've tried out different apps where, you know, you put in your posts and it'll, like, post it automatically. I, like, personally don't like it because I don't like giving my um, social media password and information to outside parties just because I'm really paranoid. Um, and... I'm also really picky about the way that I edit stuff and I wasn't able to figure out like exactly like, how to make it exactly the way that I want it for the automatic posting. So there's nothing wrong with like automatic posting sites. You could check those out. Um, for me, again, I make everything at once. I'll put it in my drafts and then I'll just post my draft whenever. Um, I'm just going to scroll back a little bit on some comments. Christopher says, came across one of your videos on Instagram, been hooked ever since you inspired me to take up guitar lessons. Thank you so much. That means so much to me. Um, I'm so, so happy that you're playing music and that you're enjoying it. Um, and thanks for watching my stuff. Let's see. Rob says, talk to me about batching content. What's a typical shoot day look like? Um, okay. I have it down to a science. Uh, oh my gosh. This is the inside scoop. Okay. Without boring you with too much detail, basically, um... Some videos I record live, so I will record right into my interface and film myself recording to my interface. Some videos that have really complicated transitions um, or jump cuts or I really need to perform, I will um, record first and then I will film later. Um, depends on the video and it also depends on how many violin parts there are. It depends on how well I, if I feel like lip syncing or not, like whatever. And um, there's no shame in lip syncing because it's like a music video and I'm still the one that played it, in my opinion. Um, so a lot of the time I'll record like seven to ten tracks. Um, and while I'm recording, if I want a live video, I'll just take a video of myself as I'm recording. Um, and then whatever's left over the next day or the day after, I will record all the music videos. Um, it's this really insane process. I have it down to science and I'm super happy to like talk more one on one about it later and like how much I have to go through to do it. Um, but it's the fastest way I can get out content every single day. Uh, and it's really fun too, because then I'll look at my, I'll like spend some time like scrolling through social media, see what I want to put, what I want to cover. I'll put it all into logic um, as like one giant track full of every single song I want to do. And then I'll just like have so much fun. This is what I was doing all last night. I was just like playing through, improvising over all of them, coming up with different arrangements, coming up with different parts, seeing what I want to be doing. Um, or learning it so I can then record it later on. Um, and and that's how I batch my content. And then I will create all seven videos, uh, seven to 10. Well, let me say five to 10. Um, and then I put it out all on Patreon and then I post it once a day throughout the week. And then throughout that, in addition to that, I'm also still making more TikTok videos because you have to be really like up to date on what um, your fan followers are wanting. So like, I have this video that was getting a lot of attention this week and people were asking all these questions. So like I needed to make some Q and A videos. Like I made a video about chopping. Um, and then sometimes you have all your content batched, but something will go viral and then people are begging you to do this other cover. And then you have to stop everything, film that really quick. Or, um, I had a well-known musician reach out to me, um, and asked me to cover one of their songs and I had to drop everything I was doing. I was literally on a business trip in California and I had to drop everything I was doing and like film that really quick. And then, you know, so things kind of deviate and get in the way, but at least I have like a bunch of, bunch of videos that I um, have stockpiled. Sarah says, I would take a workshop about you diving into this just saying. I do offer like one-on-one -on -one mentoring sessions. I, it's just the cost of like a violin lesson. Um, and I'll, I go through like your whole, social media and give you tips and suggestions. Um, but a lot of the basics I'm, I'm giving away for free today because, uh, cause I think it's important and I want to, I want to share the, the knowledge that I've been trying to like figure out for the last few months. Um, 
Okay, let's see what else is important. So yeah, you should. I, I post every day. Uh, I didn't used to. I didn't used to like doing that because I was like, wouldn't people get sick of my face after a while? Um, but I spent some time not posting every day, and then I was like, well, is everyone forgetting about me? So again, there's no right answer. You just gotta do what's best for you and not um, worry about too much uh, what everyone online is thinking. Social media has the power to be really amazing, but it can also really be draining. So I think the most important thing is finding like a really healthy balance, um, a really healthy way to go about it so it doesn't take over your life. I've been on both sides of that feeling like it was taking over my life, feeling like I didn't want anything to do with it. And now I'm in the middle um, and it's much healthier. Okay, what else is important? Um, I think in addition to posting uh, every day or posting regularly um, on your main feed. I think stories are really important too. So everyone online right now is saying the way to grow your Instagram following is post like three to four reels a week, um, post like two or three main feed posts a week, and then like six or seven story posts a day with your face in the first one. That is specifically from like a a video that I watched about a person who did that. And I was thinking about that and I was like, huh, I wonder if that actually works. And then I realized I've just been doing that naturally and it's pretty effective because right now Instagram is pushing reels. Um, so for those of you who don't know, who don't know, if you've heard of TikTok, imagine TikTok, but on Instagram and it's called reels. And then imagine that, but on YouTube and it's called YouTube shorts. It's the same exact thing similar algorithm same exact trends so once you make your tiktok video you should be posting it on reels you should be posting it on youtube shorts um i'm just gonna check the time really quick so i've okay we're good we're good to go um so whatever you um whatever you film or post you can like and that's back to what we were talking about way before like why you might want to film in really high quality like in 4k say you've done a youtube video um and you want to post it on tiktok well you can't I'm sorry, but your TikTok video is not going to do well if you post it horizontally um, because TikTok's looking for vertical and so is Instagram Reels and so is YouTube Shorts. So um, it's better if you can find a way to use the content on every single platform. Um, and and I always do that. Like if I'm posting something on on my Instagram, I'm going to put it, you know, I'm going to put it everywhere else too if I can. Um, and then that's like better anyway for, for your for your own time, your use of time. I will say it was really hard for me though to start posting my TikToks on Instagram because I was like, TikTok is such like a, it was like my safe space and Instagram meanwhile, that's like where everyone that I know follows me and I was like, oh my God. Um, and then I got over it and now my reels actually do better than my TikToks uh, because of the, the algorithm is different. Um, how do you personally ignore haters? Oh my God, that's a really good question. Uh, I've struggled with this because the more, <laughs> we've all gotten like trolls and haters in our lives. Um, if you put yourself out there, it kind of comes with the territory. The more people that are viewing your stuff, the more like, it's the same ratio of hate to love. Um, but if there's more people seeing your stuff, you're gonna get more haters. So I get a lot of comments that are either trolls, um, judgmental people who literally will tell me that I'm a disgrace to the violin world, um, people who are super racist, uh, people who are super sexist, um, and uh, people who are like, <laughs> It's, there's this like online joke where everyone's calling my violin sacrilegious, but it's really, it gets annoying like scrolling through all my comments seeing sacrilegious, 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 even though I know it's like a joke. Um, and it used to really bother me like the mean ones, like when people would say stuff like, you know, you suck or your intonation. It was like if I play in tune, they're like, they're like, you're using frets, so obviously you're cheating, even though I'm like, literally frets don't mean you automatic automatically play in tune. Like, I, I'm so tired of explaining that to um, <laughs> the world. Uh, and then if I play in tune, if I play in tune, everyone's like, you're using auto tune or you're cheating with frets. If I play a little out of tune, I had this video, I had to turn the comments off because everyone was like, you're playing out of tune, you're the worst. Blah, blah, blah. So um, anyway, to your point, um, to what you said, I... I've gotten really good at ignoring it. And actually, if you go to the Mark Wood Rock Orchestra Camp this summer, I'm going to be giving a full masterclass on how I deal with all of this. Um, but in a nutshell, I've really done a lot of self-work to deeply accept and understand that 
other people's hate comment towards you is a reflection on them and not on me. And it's really easy to say it, but what you have to basically do is just develop this like really strong understanding of that concept um, and be proud of what you're putting out. Like I used to be a little insecure because I was getting to know like the new platforms that I was posting on. I was getting used to the posting schedule. I was figuring out my own musical voice. So I wasn't totally secure in what I was doing. Um, and I was, I really cared about like the opinions of other people. So once I kind of got more um, just confident in what I'm putting out and I started owning it and owning myself. Um, and this is really good advice I got from my professor, Jason Anna. He was like, Mia, you should put stuff out um, that you're proud of. And then any like nice comment is just a bonus and any hate comment you can just laugh at. But that's way, that way you're not relying on the comments to, to make you feel good about it or bad about it. Cause then the hate comments are just going to really get you down. <sighs> that was a lot of talking. That's how I deal with the hate. Um, and I also remind myself that the majority of the stuff I get is so nice. Like the majority of the comments and the majority of the support I'm getting from people is just so, so kind and supportive. Um, and I was actually listening to Matt Bell's Rockstar Violinist podcast and he was talking to Taylor Davis and she said that she used to respond to every single comment and now she doesn't anymore. So when she gets hate, she asks herself, she's like, if I don't have time to respond to all the nice comments, why would I that give my time and attention to respond to like a hater um and i think about that too so the only time i respond to hate comments is like if they're just wrong and i want to defend my honor if they're like she's using auto-tune and i'm like no or they're like the frets mean that you're cheating and i'm like no um when i if i don't really have the energy to do that anymore but like that's the only time i really condone like for myself i condone responding to haters and then if it's racist i just block and report like immediately because i don't have time for that um, reading through your comments now. Um, do, 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 do. seeing what, okay. Um, Nick says tips for engaging a general audience on how cool the tech is. <laughs> That's a personal question that, um, we could talk about more in person, but, um, I think your videos need to be like, you're creating like a service for people like or you're creating a product you are a product slash service if you're creating content like this is going more into like content creation as opposed to how to just market yourself on social media so forgive me while i discuss this for just a minute but um you know you're creating something that people want to see and i tell this to a lot of people like you need to be putting something out that people want to follow you for like you can't just sit around this isn't in relation to your comment nick this is just in general and what i used to what i realized like i used to just sit around and wonder like you know oh i work really hard at music and like why am i not um like getting more momentum on social media this was like years ago and i learned it was because i wasn't like putting stuff out um i wasn't creating something that people wanted to see the same way that your favorite artist like puts out um an album they're creating something that you want and that's why you follow them. If they weren't doing that, you're not gonna just follow them because they're a cool person. Like maybe you will, but um, you're creating a product, you're creating an art. So your videos that you're putting on social media are also art. Um, and so if your videos are gonna be about how cool the technology is that you're using, um, that's your niche, then own it and just trust that you're gonna find a community doing that niche i found a niche with electric violin pop covers that doesn't if you're watching this right now that likely isn't your niche um you, so you need to sit and think or if it is then do it like cool the more the merrier but um if it's not you need to sit and figure out like what is it that you can offer to the world which is your art and you as a musician um and how can you put that how can you package it up into a cute little instagram post or tiktok post or whatever so that people then hear it and want more and then what people don't think about but the really important thing is you have to keep it going so a lot of the reasons people don't like continue the momentum is because they stop posting um and it's so much work like i put it takes me like two to five hours to do every single one of my videos it's so much work um and I do it anyway. So um, I don't know if that answered your question. Now I'm just rambling more. Um, but I would say uh, engaging a general audience is hard if it's a niche. Like if you want to get the attention of the public, um, you should be doing stuff that's trending, like popular songs and whatever. Um, if you want the attention of people within your niche, then do you and own it. And maybe you won't get 
millions of views on pe because most people might not know what like all the gear stuff is but like all the cool musician gearhead people are totally going to be about it and aren't those connections just as important because the whole point of this live stream is how to um get people to see your social media and want to hire you so those are the people you should be um attracting i could do another live stream about how to do viral videos but um but i will get back on on track now Catherine says recording gear i use i don't know if you can see it do 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 i use this audix adx um 5-1 yeah audix adx 5-1 con uh, condenser mic super good super cute and little and i love it um and then in terms of i have like this oh my gosh okay i'll show you my setup i have this um this mic stand that like moves and i have my amp down here um it is an orange crush rt35 because i'm endorsed with orange and i have the mic like that so then i can move the stand like up and down so when i'm recording acoustic i just have it up in front of me when i'm recording electric i usually mic my amp um so i'll just move it down in front of the amp that is all going into an apogee element 24 interface which goes into logic and that's how i record and oh and i go through a boss me 70 effects pedal because um it does everything that I need it to do, but I'm looking to invest in better, in more gear. Okay, where were we? Um, interaction is the next thing I wanted to talk about. You basically, it's really important to be interacting with people online. And I'm sometimes good at this. I'm sometimes not because again, life gets busy. But the most important thing is, you know, you're creating a product slash service for people. People are going to respond to that and people enjoy it and they want to tell you. So um, in order to like give back or show your appreciation, I always um, I always try to respond to as many DMs as I can. I can't get to all of them. I try to respond to comments. I try to be active um, and I do try to be active on other people's posts as well. But again, it's hard. I have my accounts kind of set up so it's mostly a business account. So I actually don't see I don't spend a lot of time like scrolling through my feeds. Um, Someone says join the Helix Club. Yeah, you're the like third or fourth person this week to tell me to to do it. So maybe I'll invest in the Helix stuff. Um, it seems like really good gear. <sighs> um, but yeah, interaction with the people that are um, enjoying your videos is really important. Uh, and it also shows someone that's looking at your feed that you're not a bot, like you're, you're engaging with your audience. Um, and that's how you can continue to develop and grow those connections. And again, social media is a great way to do that. Um, I also reach out to artists that I really like and I'll message them and be like, Hey, I'm a huge fan. Um, and, uh, and it's really cool. Raz says, we all share patches at rules. Oh my God. Okay. I'm, you guys are convincing me to, to, oh my God, invest in Helix gear okay i'll just do it i'll just do it <laughs> um that's like now for like five people that have told me to do it uh what else okay here's another thing really important um i don't know what all of you that are watching or all of you that will one day be watching this um are trying to do as musicians but again i know there's a lot of people in our community who um are pretty like either against tiktok or just don't understand it um so uh what's really important is to utilize the platform of tiktok now i say tiktok with an eye roll every time i do because again there's really good things about it and there's really not so good th things about it um and there's ways that you can really utilize it to expand your audience because in a way that is not has never happened before tiktok is making videos go viral and anyone can do it. It's this really interesting thing. And again, I'm not gonna go super in depth about it because um, that's a subject for like a live stream entirely about <laughs> how to do viral videos, which I could totally do. Um, but if you get lucky, you'll have a video that will like blow up and that it's made careers for people. Um, it has changed people's lives. Um, I like went on this, I jumped on this sea shanty trend and um, it's this guy Nathan Evans and he posted this video of him singing a sea shanty and now he's signed with I don't remember what record label but like one of the biggest record labels in the world just because of the sea shanty video it just went super viral and I my video was on it so we ended up I ended up being put in like New York Times BuzzFeed Washington Post BBC like NBC an Adam Neely video like all these things just because of my one little sea shanty video um but this guy just like blew up and now he's like a famous um 
a famous person, a famous pop singer. And it was just from this one video. And before that, he was like a nobody. So that's why TikTok is really powerful. Um, because if you're putting stuff out there and people like what you do, it's based on engagement. Um, so if people are liking it and watching it all the way through, like it will get boosted. And so, um, you know, you, you're doing yourself a disservice by not putting your stuff out on that app. Uh, so that's my sales pitch for it. And that's why I, I started, well, I didn't start doing it for that reason. I started doing it just cause it was my secret place where I could be myself. <laughs> um, and now, now I do it because I want to share stuff with, with people and I want to make people happy. And like, isn't that the whole point of everything? Um, please let me know if you have any other questions before I finish things up. Um, oh yeah. One last thing is. You know, this is all I'm going through all the ways to do it for free, because, of course, you could do like paid promotions um, and it's kind of rare to do that. I've experienced that, like, if you pay to have a big account, like feature your video, a lot of the time I found it is not very effective. If you pay for like a prom like promotion for a video of yours to um, like be promoted to other accounts i've experienced that as being very effective like so i had this video this was way before the tiktok thing like i just paid like 30 bucks and i it was like for five days it'll show your video to this many um like your ad or whatever or your video to this many accounts and that was pretty effective um but again tiktok does that for free to way more people so um so yes okay rob says okay okay i'll post more tiktoks but do you film in vertical first or crop i film in vertical first. Um, sometimes I'll crop a video if I don't like how, if it's like, if I were to crop this video, then the TikTok would look like me being super zoomed in. So some people will um, like post three videos, one on top of another of like the same video. Like just look and see what other people are doing, but I would film it vertically. And if you're doing the record first and lip sync later method, which some people do, um, then you could just film with the same audio, but film two different videos, one horizontal, one vertical, um, or record the whole thing once horizontally and record it again vertically. Um, it, it's kind of up to you, but yeah, you really, okay. Rob says lots of my YouTube content is really a drag to crop both square for IG and vertical. Isn't it a pain? This is like, this is my plight. Let me tell you, Rob, because <laughs> Like on YouTube, you want to be f doing it hor uh, horizontally. TikTok, YouTube Shorts, and Reels, you want vertical. Instagram, I guess Square is the way to go. Unless you're doing IGTV, which you want um, horizontal. Facebook, both are fine. Um, it's just such a pain. Like it's so annoying. So yeah, that's um. You're not alone in that struggle. I I definitely deal with that too. So. <sighs> This is what I do. I film everything vertically and for YouTube, I will like, if, especially if it's a cover where I'm playing multiple violin parts, I'll just line up like four or five vertical videos in a row. So it creates one horizontal split screen video. That's my way around it. Um, but you gotta just do what's best for you. But what you don't want to do is post a horizontal video on TikTok unless it's really good. Like if it's so good that people don't care, it'll go viral. But like, try it like post the same exact video horizontal and vertical and you'll just get so many more views on a vertical one on tiktok not on youtube um and then on tiktok people do the opposite thing they'll post three horizontal videos you know check out um Lindsay sterling is on tiktok look what she does she posts all of her music videos from youtube on tiktok but look at the way that she crops it and i would say do that if it's something you've already filmed for youtube but henceforth, moving onward, I would say try to create a horizontal and vertical version. Oh my god, I've said horizontal and vertical so many times. And Or again, film it really wide and then crop it accordingly. That's what some people do. Um, yes, please, anyone else, ask some more questions. Um, huh, let's see, I feel like I covered everything I wanted to talk about. Um, just the main thing is be open to putting yourself out there, I would say. Um, and again, you want to create a product that is entertaining and engaging, if that's your niche. If you're an informational creator, then create stuff like really high quality information videos. Um, Rob says, what do you use to edit? I use Adobe Premiere. 
Um, and I, I'm in a unique position because uh, my family has, my dad has a multimedia production company. So I used to work in high school for him. So I learned how to edit videos on Premiere. But it's expensive. I have a, the student discount because I'm a student still. But um, more affordable one would be Final Cut, Final Cut Pro. I would go with that. If you like totally aren't about that, there's some apps you can use. Um, Video Leap, CapCut, those are really great apps you can use. Um, and then for editing pictures, you know, I have access to Photoshop. A free app is PixArt. Um, yeah, and I film everything outside of the app because, oh, here's another little tip for all of you. If you're putting something on TikTok, you don't want to put that same, you don't want to download it from TikTok and then post it on Reels because Instagram is suppressing any video that has a TikTok watermark. So I always post the same video um, to every platform, but I used to just download my video off TikTok and post it on Reels. And then it was so easy because all the words I had edited on there were there and like any sound, it doesn't work like that anymore. So you have to, um, like the inside scoop is that you don't want a TikTok watermark on your, on your Instagram videos. Tiffany says she filmed a few videos in Hawaii vertically and horizontally for different platforms. Yep, it is super important and annoying that we have to do that, but but yes. First use of the word henceforth in an electric violin shop live stream. You're welcome. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, your comment is longer. She says, I'm getting really into editing and recording and still pretty unsure of myself. We'll be scheduling a consult with you. I watch your videos all the time for inspiration and getting to hear you talk about it is really helpful. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad you're enjoying it. I hope this is helpful. I know I'm, I'm still like just scratching the surface. There's so much more we could talk about, but um, she says, these are the free sites to remove the TikTok watermark. Whoa. Okay. That's really good to know. Thank you. Wow. See, I'm learning from you now. <laughs> um, that's super good to know. Thank you. That would uh, be very helpful because otherwise, yeah, I have to kind of like post the same video on multiple platforms. <sighs> but you got to do what you got to do. And it takes a lot of time, which is why this is kind of like a full time job, which is why it was really hard for me to do when I was doing a full time college semester. And it's really hard for me to do right now when I'm doing summer classes and an internship. And but I want it bad enough that I make the time for it because I really love it. And it's it's again created like a situation I never experienced where I've been able to connect with so many people and so many incredible musicians I've got to collaborate with or um, who know who I am, like people that I uh, was like a big fan of pre all of this. And then now like, you know, I'll, I'll get to talk to them or hear their music or they want to collab. And it's like a really, really cool um, experience. And, you know, the best way to do that is uh, by knowing how to promote yourself um, online and having good quality, engaging, entertaining videos, um, if that's your niche, uh, or really high quality, like educational videos, if that's your niche, or, um, or, oh, Bridget's here. She says, true, having a YouTube channel slash TikTok and Instagram is having a full-time job, then practicing is another full-time job. I know, that's my struggle, is like, how am I supposed to practice as much as I want to every day? Take 16 credits of college classes, and I'm, I'm double majoring in five years, so it's like a lot, and have a social life, and practice self-care. Maybe I want to work out every day. Maybe I want to go on a walk every day and make seven to 10 TikTok videos a week and one YouTube video a week, ideally, and do a TikTok live stream every week, ideally, and like take breaks and work on my original music. And, you know, I could go on and on and on. It's like, how do you find the time for that? Um... The answer is that I did that for a while and burnt out really bad. <laughs> now I'm, I've found a balance, finding a balance. Rob says, LOL, a social life. Yeah, that, that's pretty hard. Oh yeah, and gigging. Gigging is, uh, I wasn't even thinking about that because it's been so long since I've been doing that regularly. But yeah, that's starting up again. So it's priorities. But here's the thing that I said way at the beginning of the stream um, is, wait, what did I say? I just got distracted by the comments to take your violin on your walk, which I think is so funny. <laughs> uh, multitasking. Um, but the most important thing is doing it because um, a lot of people don't and then you're not experiencing a lot of the benefits that can come from it, um, which, like I said, are it opens up a lot of connections and I get a lot of work from it. Like, yes, I know there's a lot of ways that you can like market yourself and, and gig and and 
and promote your gigs. Um, but social media is a way to do it really fast and for free. Um, and it's super, super powerful. So I'll leave like two more minutes for any other questions that you guys have. Um, and otherwise I will hop off and let you ruminate on the enormous amount of information I've just unloaded on all of you. Um, she said, Bridget says, what camera are you using right now? It looks super HD. Thank you. I'm using the front camera on my iPhone 12 Pro that I just got. Up until like a week ago, I've been using this iPhone 8 Plus, which again, if you film with the back camera, will film in 4K. But the reason this video looks good, I went through this at the beginning, it's because I'm sitting in front of a window with direct light and I'm using studio lights because otherwise it looks like this. Um... So that's why my video looks good quality. Um, Tiffany says, haha, what's a social life? Aw, yeah. You know, someone once told me, one of my close friends told me once, he was like, music doesn't come without sacrifice. So I look at all the things that I want to do and something's got to give, whether it's sleep or social life or whatever. But again, if you want it bad enough, you'll make the time for it um, or you'll find the time for it. And I'm here to try and convince all of you to put some time into your social media presence because it'll really benefit you. Christopher says, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Uh, so good to see all of you on here. I was glad to get to connect with some of you, um, get to see some of my friends on here who've been asking really nice questions. So thanks guys. Um, any last questions? Any last questions? If not, I'm gonna, I'm gonna head to class. I have an Ableton class in like 10 minutes that I'm really excited about. Um, okay. Well, yeah, once again, happy to do further, give further information in future, future streams, but hopefully this gives you enough for now. Um, and, and yeah, and yes, Matt, I, I, I agree with what Pete said, Matt, please have, have more artists do live streams like this. Cause I want to learn from, from everyone too. I want to, I want to see all of, see all of you guys and hear what you have to say. So, okay. So good to see you guys. Um, thanks again, Matt and Electric Violin Shop for having me here. Super, super honored. Um, and I will see you on TikTok or Instagram, hopefully very soon.